Welcome to A Pastor's Perspective. I'm Ken Gray, and I serve here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center. And today our devotion continues in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 22, through the end of the chapter. Now, this is a particularly interesting passage, especially in light of the day in which we live. One of the things that can be very frustrating is to see men or women uh, in our environment, in our culture today, that are doing evil, and it appears that there's just no consequence, and they just keep going on and on. Well, there was a similar situation with Eli and his sons. His sons were very corrupt. In his old age, Eli began to hear rumors that they were having immoral relationships with women who were attending the, the temple, and as a consequence, he began to rebuke his sons for that. Well, in fact, this rebuke kind of came late in their lives, so his sons were very ingrained in their behavior, and they ignored the warning of their father, even though he said they would have to give an account to God. And consequently, the Bible tells us that God really, at this point, had had, had it with Eli's sons and wanted to put them to death. And then there's an interesting verse that comes right in the middle of this discussion of the wickedness of Eli's sons. And it says in verse 26, Now the boy Samuel was growing in stature and in favor both with the Lord and with men. In the middle of a very difficult, evil climate, this young man Samuel is persisting in righteousness and growing and gaining favor with God and with men. And I believe even in our culture where there seems to be a great amount of wickedness and evil, that God is raising up young men, young women who will have favor with him and they're growing in spite of the fact that they're being highly influenced and bombarded with evil. Now, this man of God was sent to Eli to give him a prophetic message and remind him that God had given him great privilege and position, and yet he had not appreciated that. And it says in verse 29, Why do you kick at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my dwelling? And honor your sons above me by making yourselves fat with the choices of every offering of my people. Therefore, the Lord God of Israel declares, I did indeed say that your house, your house and the house of your father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it from me, for those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me will be lightly esteemed. So God said, even though I made an amazing promise to you that you, you know, he could enjoy a long-term legacy, he says, if you do not honor me, I'm not going to continue to honor you. And I will only honor those who honor me. And I believe that the God in this culture where people are no longer honoring God in general, there are those who will continue to honor God. And as a consequence, God will eventually reverse the roles of what we are seeing. That these people who are persisting in evil will not be able to do so forever. The, the severe prophecy that came against uh, Eli involved his legacy. He would not have a long-lasting legacy. And God said that he would have a sign. It says in verse 34, This will be the sign to you which will come concerning your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. On the same day, both of them will die. And so this, this sign that was given to a uh, prophetic sign that was given to uh, Eli regarding his sons was indication of a great and severe and painful loss. And then it goes on to say that God would raise up others who would take his place and that the roles of his descendants would be reversed. They would no longer enjoy a place of position and, and authority and privilege, but they would be in a place of begging and there would be others that would be raised up to authority. One of the things that's so important for us never to ever forget in the context of a culture that seems to be enjoying evil without consequence. People are allowed to rob stores without any consequence if they're under a certain uh, price tag, you might say. But we need to understand they might get away with it with a store, 
They might get away with it with the law enforcement and our government, but the reality is there will be an accountability. There will be a, a holding to account, and God will intervene on our behalf. Now, there may be long-term uh, evil that is to go on and on without any serious consequences, but that doesn't mean it will be forever uh, it, they will forever escape the consequences of bad behavior. So I want to just encourage you today that God does see what's going on. He does understand the injustices that we are seeing in our culture today. But the reality is God is ultimately in control and he will deal with it and we can rest in God's word and the history that we see in the scriptures. Let me pray with you today that you might have peace and to know that you can still grow uh, with the favor of God and in righteousness in the midst of an evil and corrupt world. Father, I thank you that you are so good to us and that you are so merciful. And Lord, you give us lots of opportunities for repentance and turning to you. But Lord, you put up with evil for only so long. And Lord, we ask that you would help us to understand that we would not need to be discouraged or disheartened by the abundance of evil that seems to lack any consequence uh, of severity. Lord, we pray that we would understand you are in charge and Lord, that you will deal with these things in your time. And we just trust you. We pray that you would help us not to be distracted by the evil that is around us, but Lord, that we would be encouraged like Samuel to be persistent in prayer be persistent in reading your word, be persistent in worship, and Lord, embrace those things that will allow us to grow and become strong and will have favor with God in the midst of an evil and dying world. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for listening to A Pastor's Perspective today. It's a beautiful day out there. I hope you've been enjoying this gorgeous fall. We would love to invite you here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Our address is 174 East Johnson Avenue, Cheshire, Connecticut. God bless you. Hope to see you on Sunday.